This is how Boston sports fans drive home. Oh, my God, please. Well, listen, yelling at each other. Those people just rot in hell. Felger and Mad on 98.5 The Sports Hub. You want the answer? You've got to ask the question. Do you have an opinion based on if you had to go with your gut, what, which way it would go? Uh, Sometimes you have to ask it over and over and over again. Why, 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 why? This is 10 Questions with Greg Bedard and Felger and Mass on 98.5 The Sports Hub. 10 questions around the league. 10 minutes with Greg Bedard. we got to be on time. Jimmy, what are our buzzer options? Uh, five of my favorites from the year. All right. Ooh, best like of. It. You know people are coming up from behind you. They're going to whack it out every time. They're going to whack it out. Okay, Danny, didn't know you. Well, okay, good. Next. Connor, Connor McDermott. McDermott. <laughs> In unison. Next. I don't like how you're doing this. You're nothing but an a-hole. You shut up, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> That's Mac Jones and Joe Judge in the team meeting room. Yes. Oh, my God. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> That's Milliken just being Milliken. Last one. He beat off Bryce Young. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> All-timer. Favorite. Yeah. Thank you. You wonder why Alabama is Alabama? Yep. He beat off Bryce Young. <laughs> exactly. I they get come it. up with one a year. <laughs> Some interesting uh, ways to settle the depth chart. Number yep. 10, thoughts? Thoughts on Matt Patricia running the Eagles defense last night. <laughs> I giggled when they gave up the, the lead late. But, uh, you know, from what I know, this was a Howie Roseman production that, uh, you know, Howie put him in. He likes to almost sort of like Game of Thrones things on his coaching staff and in his front office. And to, from what I heard, this was a Howie Roseman directed move on the coaching staff. I mean, given how that game ended, can we say the Seahawks now have one of the biggest plays in the fourth quarter in <laughs> recent uh, NFL history? Uh, can we say that? That Drew Locke picked up two third and tens in the game-winning drive, including the one on the touchdown. And rather than GTFB, which, again, that's what you need to be doing because they yes. needed to score a touchdown, that slob had his corners playing man, including James Bradbury, who blows. He gets roasted. He rushes four. It was classic Matt Patricia. It was the best. I took such great joy because they kept panning <laughs> the camera on that pig on the eagle sideline as he was getting roasted by another backup quarterback i'm like this is going to happen again and it did and it was the best they just got patricia next i don't like how you're doing this you're nothing but an a-hole you shut up you bitch <laughs> other what than you the know? other than the 49ers greg panel do you believe in anyone in the nfc I think the Eagles will be right there at the end. They're way too talented not to figure things out. If they just play a little bit more conservative, which you know I think Matt Patricia can do uh, in time, and they just sort of make the other make the opponent beat them, I think they have a chance. But the Niners are the clear class of the NFC. Yeah, look, I I think all top three in the NFC are pretty good. I still don't rule out Dallas. I'm not telling you they're a favorite, and I'm going to give you a dark horse. Uh, right now, they're in. And if they get in, I think they could be a little scary, and that's the Rams. Okay, I'm asking you believe in. Who do you believe in? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a hard no. Eagles are frauds. Cowboys are frauds. The Lions are the Lions, and they'll find a way to disappoint. All the wild cards are trash, so no. It's the Niners. Just give them the trophy now. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, if you believe that. Next. Connor, Connor McDermott. McDermott. Do you believe in anyone, anyone at all, in the AFC? I like the the Dolphins and the Ravens, but no. I don't trust Miami's offense traveling in January, and I don't trust Harbaugh at all. Uh, Casey, Buffalo, and Baltimore, all legit threats. I guess the Ravens, if I have to pick one. They had good road wins earlier in the season. They went to Cincy, beat Burrow when he was healthy. They just Detroit, destroyed Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Lamar Jackson's healthy for once, so I guess Baltimore, but I don't feel great about it. Well, that doesn't sound like belief. Oh, Believe? Then no. Then no. Like I said, you give, believe in, give the trophy to the Niners now. It's over. That's it. That's the only team to believe in in the league, according to Murray. Next. Oh, my God. Go f*** yourself. What team should be better than they are? Who should be better than they are? Seattle. Uh, you know, Geno played tremendous last year. He's been awful this year. They have talent on that team. I don't know what the problem is. They should be better than they are. Uh, the Chargers and Jacksonville both. The Chargers are an easy one. That team shouldn't be out of the playoffs. And Jacksonville should be better than they are. They got talent. I Frankly, I'm a little disappointed in the quarterback. Well, call me Mr. Easy then. I went with the Chargers. Coach was obviously part of the problem, but there's too much talent on the roster for them to be a five-win team. Next. He beat off Bryce Young. <laughs> Do you like the league right now, Greg? Nope. 
I, I and I heard Murray talking about this. I think with Gasper uh, over the weekend, the the triple header that was on Saturday, I barely had any interest in those games. I I don't think I even watched all that much of the games, and that to me says a lot of where the NFL is right now. It's not very competitive, not very compelling. Too many injuries, too many flags. I I just don't have any interest in tuning in. I like it. Uh, no, I've never disliked it more. Offense is down so bad that in consecutive weeks, let's not forget, you had games that finished 6 nothing, which was here, and then 3 nothing, with the latter being played in an effing dome. The O-line plays atrocious. It's over-officiated. All the marquee games in prime time, save for Eagles, Bills, and Seahawks, Cowboys, have been blowout trash. The product blows. Parody's gone too far. And if it wasn't for the job and my stupid parlays that never hit, I'd spend my time reading or going for a long walk. Reading. Yeah, it's, reading? Fun, it's fundamental. <laughs> I know. I, I, I read. You read? Yeah. Either that or play the guitar. I think of them. Well, now we go. Yeah, no. Well, there we are. I, I, I think it's good. I like it. I don't know who's going to win. Ugh. I don't know who's going to win. I don't know who's going to lose. I, that's what interests me. And it's I, I like the wide open nature of it. I like it. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with scoring being down. And scoring was up too much. It got goofy there for a couple of years. So I think it's in a good place. I'm happy with it. Next. I don't like how you're doing this. You're nothing but an a-hole. You shut up, you bitch. <laughs> what do you know? Number five, tool bag question. Is it a tool bag move for the NFL to have a game on Christmas Eve? Uh, yes. I don't like it. They've done it for years. I know I've covered games on Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, maybe it was more late afternoon. But, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that to people. The only tool bag part is that it's the Pats. Talk about screwing America. Yeah, so did you mean by Christmas Eve night? Because, I mean, it still falls on a Sunday. There's 10 games being played that day. The NFL plays on Sunday. Holiday be damned. Show must go on. Okay. That's not the thing. It is a tool bag move. You know, the NFL wants every night, every day during the season, we're going to take every night you got. We're not just going to take Thanksgiving. We're now going to take Black Friday. We're not just going to play on Christmas. We're not just going to play on Christmas Eve. We're going to play on the night of Christmas Eve. We're not just going to play on this day. We're going to play on that day. We're not just playing Mondays. We're playing Thursdays. And then when college is over, we're not just playing on Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. We're going to throw in some Saturday games. And uh, if you don't like it, we're just going to shove it right down your throat till you gag on it. And two on Monday night at the same time. Right. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Next. You know people are coming up from behind you. They're going to whack it out every time. <laughs> They're going to whack it out. Interesting, Daniel. Number four, who is the most overrated quarterback in the league? Dak. I mean, look, I think he's good, but to me, he looks like a quarterback that everything has to be right. You know, he plays behind a great offensive line. They have a running game. They have a good defense. Like, but, you know, when it's things haven't worked, he's just, he's just not that good. Justin Herbert. I keep saying it. No one Stop. wants to hear it. It's Justin Herbert. Only scary when he runs. Saw him last night, Jalen Hurts. And a few years from now, mark my words, we're going to look back at that Super Bowl performance he had last year. Like, oh, he would have been MVP if the Eagles won. We're going to call that as big of a fluke as Joe Flacco's postseason run in 2012. Hurts, not, no, not so sneaky kind of snakes. Next. Connor, Connor McDermott. McDermott. Who's the MVP of the league? I know this last weekend didn't help his cause, but to me it's Tyreek Hill. And I, I just think he's the biggest difference maker. You take him away from the Dolphins. Yes, they won this week against the Jets. To me, that game said more about the Jets and about, you know, Zach Wilson and their quarterback position than anything else. Tyreek Hill is the biggest difference maker. The Dolphins don't have a chance in hell if he's not on the field. Christian McCaffrey, but I'll say this. It's not a quarterback. Whether you want McCaffrey or Hill or A.J. Brown, take you wherever you want, but it's not a quarterback this year. I'm with Maz, Christian McCaffrey. Niners' offense runs through him or the left tackle, and they're not going to give it to an old lineman, so McCaffrey. Uh, I think it is a quarterback, and I think it's so clearly Patrick Mahomes, it's not even funny. What What, what is that? If they don't have Patrick Mahomes, yep. do they have a winning record? I, I, I know their defense is good, but they're hardly the only uh, good defense out there. There's a lot of good defenses. I mean, are, are, do they even have a winning record if it's not Patrick Mahomes? And they could be a Super Bowl team. I think it's him. Next. He beat off Bryce Young. <laughs> Again, very interesting way to move up and down the depth chart there in Alabama. <laughs> if Mike Tomlin moves on from Pittsburgh, where would be the best landing spot for him? And who would be a good coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, for Tomlin, it would be Washington. He's from Hampton, Virginia. He went to William & Mary. It'd be going home for him. Uh, who would be good for the Steelers? 
Ah, I think Harbaugh would fit there. I mean, he sort of fits their persona. Uh, if we're fitting persona and not geography, Tomlin and the Bears feels like a good fit to me. Like the Bears, typically physical team, historically, not necessarily offense first. I feel philosophically Tomlin's perfect. And if he goes there, I love the idea of Brian Flores taking over the Steelers. I think that's perfect. Best landing spot right now for Tomlin is TV for a year. Wildly entertaining. Doesn't pull punches even when talking about his own team. So you go to the desk or the booth for a season, then go take over some suck team next year or the following year for a mountain of money. And good coach for the Steelers, Mike Grable. Okay, two good ones. I got or all all three good ones. Next. I don't like how you're doing this. You're nothing but an a-hole. You shut up, you bitch. <laughs> what do you know? Greg, who's your favorite coach of all time? Not necessarily the best, but your favorite. Joe Gibbs. I, I don't know. I just love to watch his teams play. He won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. I think he's completely underrated and not mentioned enough. I will say B- Bill Walsh is right there for me also. He was like my first coach that I was like, this guy's just, you know, cool. And his sweater on the sideline, just, I don't know. I, I just liked Bill Walsh as well. So I'm going to give you three of them. But but I will tell you that they're on the spectrum. They're at various ends. Parcells and Walsh on the ends, Andy Reid in the middle, because I think he's some sort of combination of the two. Parcells had the personality. Walsh had the acumen. Reid has both. Uh, Parcells, for me, it's the guy who actually made the Patriots relevant here in my lifetime. Success everywhere he went. Funny. Mostly entertaining. He was kind of like a football Archie Bunker. Sometimes you'd laugh. Sometimes you'd be like, oh, my God, what are you doing? But I love Parcells. Vince Lombardi, Bill Walsh. Uh, two different guys, but uh, Walsh was uh, felt to me, I, 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 you know, not your typical hardo football coach, a little more cerebral and uh, mild mannered. And there's just something to him that was uh, different, I thought, endearing and very likable. Never mind the fact oh, that he was the first coach that I looked at and thought genius, you know, like mm-hmm. that thing. You know, that was him. And uh, Lombardi, I think, speaks for itself. Thus concludes 10 questions. Back to your phones right after Murray's update. He beat off Bryce Young. 